26 bones, more than 20 muscles in a unique configuration, one of the most important parts of our bodies, and yet we tend to give them so little thought. Our feet. Through the decades, we have been influenced and conditioned to accept the modern running shoe, flashy, cool, and comfortable, according to expensive R&D departments. However, shoes from some of the biggest brands in the world are doing serious damage to the structure of our integral appendages. Thankfully, that damage is not irreparable. Prepare to go barefoot and bold as we jog you through the history and evolution of the modern shoe and how it has affected us over time. Let's begin. In time before time, early in our evolutionary history, humans did everything barefoot. Our feet acted as sensors that detected heat, cold, terrain composition, and even vibrations that could have signaled some kind of danger. We were grounded to our environments and more in tune with the world around us. However, we were also more vulnerable and unable to travel longer distances. And then we invented footwear to remedy those issues. Unfortunately, another set of problems began to arise. Things like sandals and crude leather shoes that amounted to little more than a protective bag have been found that date back as far as 8,000 BC. This kind of footwear obviously wouldn't have impeded our feet in any meaningful way, but that wasn't the case in other parts of the world throughout time. Heeled shoes worn by men in European countries changed the angle of the foot's contact with the ground, negating the natural benefit of the spring-loaded effect of the arch. Foot binding and lotus shoes of China's Song Dynasty permanently deformed the feet of women as young as seven years old. Studies of skeletons from these early eras have shown that as shoes became more common over the generations, they caused the structure of our feet to change fundamentally. The bones in our toes got shorter and thinner, less durable as they had no reason to spread out and grip the terrain as they did before. Shoes became more prevalent and even more restrictive through the 19th and 20th centuries. With the rise of companies like Reebok, New Balance, Adidas, Puma, and especially Nike. When running took off as a popular exercise in America around the 1970s, a man named Bill Bowerman began altering his athletic shoe designs to accommodate people who weren't used to that kind of extended activity. After consulting with doctors, the Nike co-founder added a half-inch heel lift to remedy the calf and Achilles tendon pain those people were experiencing. But due to the mechanics of the body and the wear and tear caused by running, the heel lift caused yet another set of problems. Heel counters, insoles, arch support, padding, and all manner of other features were added to offset the unnatural angle. And those innovations continue to persist into the modern day. Constrictive toe boxes, excessive padding, and inflexible materials, along with the popularity of running shoes and society's insistence on shoes in general, have led to the alteration and deformation of our feet. How can my shoes be hurting me that much, you might be wondering. Well, while you might not even realize it due to wearing shoes your whole life, all of the cushioning and arch support in your sneakers is causing a number of issues that aren't very good trade-offs for comfortability. First, it actually reduces the sensory feedback you get through your feet. This can cause your balance to be impaired along with decreased proprioception, which is your body's ability to sense movement and its surroundings. Whereas you might have been able to feel grass, rocks, and uneven terrain through the leather bag shoes of ancient times, you certainly won't through several layers of foam, fabric, and rubber. Speaking of those multiple layers, the excessive cushioning also causes important foot muscles to go unutilized, causing them to atrophy and possibly resulting in injuries. It's like trying to lift weights like a bodybuilder when you've never lifted before in your life. It's just not going to end well. Modern shoes also encourage heel strike running, which involves landing on your heel rather than your toes or the balls of your feet. This is a tremendously unnatural pattern for the human body that generates joint and soft tissue damaging impact forces throughout the feet and legs. If you're an athlete who actually relies on your feet to achieve your peak speed and performance, you should know that your sneakers are holding you back in one very important aspect, your toes. Our toes are designed to spread wide for balance, grip the ground for stability, and sync up with our legs to propel us forward. However, modern shoes tend to have narrow toe boxes that prevent them from spreading and nothing to grip due to soft foam cushions and linings. These design decisions can lead to deformities like bunions and hammer toes, as well as weakened propulsion and poor balance. The trajectory of shoe design seems to have doomed our feet from the beginning, but there's still hope. The rise of minimalist or barefoot shoes has given us an option to go back to a more natural state for our feet, hopefully one that can reverse decades and perhaps even centuries of damage. Just about every issue with modern shoes is remedied by minimalist shoe designs. The thin, durable soles allow for more natural foot movement, which activates the underutilized muscles in the feet and legs. 
Proprioception is also enhanced due to the increased sensory feedback. The impacts of heel striking are discouraged by the lack of excessive padding, leading to a natural running pattern, more efficient movement, and the prevention of related injuries. Having your feet flat on the ground creates a natural alignment for your body, which improves posture and reduces strain on your lower back. If you've ever wondered why your back hurts so much, you probably never considered your shoes to be the culprit. Finally, a combination of flexible materials and more breathable toe boxes allows your toes to splay and grip naturally, unlocking their proper function and unleashing their maximum potential. With so many benefits available, with a simple change in footwear, why aren't minimalist shoes more common? We would wager that this is due to the perception of the style of shoe being strange because it goes against the status quo, or perhaps because the general public just isn't educated about the situation. With your help, we can change that. If you share this video with your friends and family, we can spread this helpful information to a wider audience, hopefully causing them to make a conscious, healthy change in their lives. These fixes won't happen overnight, just as the damage done didn't happen in days, months, or years. But there's no better time to start fixing things than right now. Runners Athletics, Barefoot and Bold, check out our website at the link below and subscribe to the channel for more informative content just like this.